Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We have breaking news that E3 is dead. Again. Permanently this time. Unless it comes back. Which it probably won't, but it did before. But it's not going to anymore. You know what? Let's just talk about it. This is a cow's opinion. And I really didn't plan on making an opinion video today because I didn't think anything was going to happen. But, according to... Alyssa McKinty and some other people that we're going to talk to. Thank you, Kutaku, for this article I'll be pulling most of my info from. E3 is finally dead. The Electronic Entertainment Expo is no more. Now, if you're one of the younger viewers, you might be going, What? Because E3's had a very rough last couple of years. So, it started back in 95. And it was the place. At first, it was just an industry trade show. The... Publishers, developers, and the stores, and the advertisers, everybody involved in the gaming industry would go to this convention, they would show each other what they're making, what they're working on, fight for, fight for like, shelf space on when you had to use to go to a store, or back when you had Blockbuster and you could rent games, you know, hey, you're really going to want to stock up on copies of these games because everybody's going to want to play them. And it's gone through many highs and lows over the last few decades. But according to the Washington Post exclusive interview with pre the present CEO of the ESA, which is the Entertainment Software Association, Stanley Pierre Lewis, it's finally gone. So Pierre Lewis said that after more than two decades of hosting an event that has served as a central showcase for the U.S. and global video game industry, E3 is no more. Now, again, E3's had ups and downs, but the biggest punch that started this whole thing was the global pandemic. I can't say what caused it because YouTube will flag this video still, but that really hurt it. It made them cancel in 2020. Then they went to an all-digital format in 2021, which is actually not that bad. Then they canceled again in 2022. This year was supposed to be the big comeback you know, it's the reckoning, that lone gunfighter that used to show the Game Awards how it's done was coming back and showing them how you do an actual show. Not a couple of hours, but an entire weekend of video games and glory. And then it got canceled. There were problems because all the major publishers pulled out. PlayStation, Nintendo, and Microsoft, the console makers... They don't need E3 anymore. Nintendo and Microsoft put on really great showcases at least a couple of times of the years on their own for their first party titles and their big third party publishers. They don't need a once in a year event because honestly, a once in a year event is just not enough for them anymore. Oh, also, Sony has their state of play, but the last couple ones have really sucked. Uh, I'm starting to worry about Sony, honestly, but that's for another video, possibly. And then most of the third-party publishers, you got your EA. When Activision Blizzard was separate, you have them. Take-Two, uh, all Capcom, Ubisoft, worldwide, more and more. No publisher wanted to, that was huge wanted to commit to E3. Because it's a lot of time. You got to send people over there. You have to send the booth over there. You have to hire people to run the booth with your, person, with your uh, employees. You have to come up with merch that you can hand out that can be auctioned off on eBay later. It's a lot of work and a lot of expense for a weekend when you can show off a 30-minute or one-hour, hey, guys, I'm posting it for free on YouTube on Twitter with just one person from your PR department, maybe one person who's in charge of making that game, and, uh, oh, yeah, one person who can actually play the game at a high level, one of the developers. So it was really hard to justify it. None of the main people wanted to go. And so they canceled this year. And they said, well, we're also going to cancel 2024 and 2025. And a lot of people, I believe myself included, were like, well, that's it. You're not going to be gone since 2021. And then suddenly come back five years later in 2026 and do it. But it's like, no, 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 no. We're still coming. We are still coming. Now, obviously... Jeff Keighley of the Game Awards was apparently happy because it drew more attention to his Summer Games Fest, which is another show he puts on. And look, Jeff puts on some great shows. They're not E3 level, but they don't have to be, and they're not supposed to be. But just this past fall, E3 was like, no, we're coming back. 
We're going to remake it. We're going to take the actual time to do it right, to get the industry behind us. We are back. While the reach of E3 remains unmatched in our industry, we are continuing to explore how we can evolve it to best serve the video game industry and are evaluating every aspect of the event from format to location, Pierre Lewis said then. We are committed to our room. Role, excuse me. Now, they'll go find a room to live their role as a conveyor for the industry and look forward to sharing news about E3 in the coming months. It's now December from September, and here's the news they have to share. After more than two decades of E3, each one bigger than the last, debatable, the time has come to say goodbye. Thanks for the memories. And that's it. That is not what E3 fans were hoping for after three long months, but that is the decision that's been made. The ESA just doesn't seem to know what to do with the event anymore, so they're finally getting rid of it. We know the entire industry, players and creators alike, have a lot of passion for E3. We share that passion, says Pierre Lewis, to the Washington Post. We know it's difficult to say goodbye to such a beloved event, but it's the right time to do, given the new opportunities in the industry to reach fans and partners, which is literally him just admitting what we've all said. Companies now can, uh, you can make a YouTube channel for virtually no money and you can start playing demos, trailers, interviews and stuff. And not only that, but you can monetize that. And so now instead of paying E3 to rent out lots of booth space, you can make a little money off of showing your game. And I mean, why would you go to E3 for an entire weekend when your own PR group can do even better at a fraction of the cost. You don't need E3 anymore. And that's sad. But it's true. E3 gave us some great moments. Like when Nintendo's Reggie Fusume came out. And just blew away the entire young internet then. When he said Nintendo's going to dominate. And you know what? Nintendo's been doing pretty good. Thanks in no small part to him. When they revealed the PlayStation. And of course, Ikumi Nakamura. Just look that one up. You won't be upset. And so the official website for the event is now being replaced with this same screen. Unfortunately, guys, it is probably done. It's the end of an era. Although, Pierre Lewis is optimistic. And... Any one of these major companies can create an individual showcase. I've been saying that the entire time I've been talking. Also partner with other industry events to showcase the breadth of games. That's exciting for our industry. And it means it's an opportunity for them to explore how to engage new audiences in different ways. We also have a little more from Andy Robinson here at Video Game Chronicles, which I really do like their writing. And he, you know, he's basically saying the same thing. Started in 1995. Millions of eyes and media covered. But he's saying the same thing. In recent years, many game publishers questioned its relevance as the digital world empowered them to reach out directly to their audiences. The pandemic turbocharged this shift. And despite attempts at resurrecting E3, it never recovered. E3 could have still... We all tune in and watch the Game Awards. It's basically E3 with a, little, with a very little award show now. I hope that Jeff fixes that for next year but yeah we still would sit and watch all the cool you could still have an awesome weekend of gaming but e3 didn't have the opportunity or move fast enough to capitalize on the massive digital shift where you could just have things now it was supposed again it was supposed to return in four years this past summer with PAX organizer Reed Pop. And if you've ever been to a PAX, they're wonderful. I have not been. I've had friends who have gone. And uh, you get pretty much global praise from them. But the show got canceled in March, like we said. And then the events company would later part ways with the ESA in September, saying they were evaluating every aspect of the event. Reed Pop had claimed it simply did not garner the sustained interest necessary to execute it in a way that would showcase the size, strength, and impact of our industry. That may or may not be code for PAX is like, look, Reed Pop is like, look, we can make it this big. And the ESA is like, no, 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 it's got to be the biggest. We got to show the Game Awards and the PC Gaming Show and Summer Games Fest and the Nintendo Directs. We got to blow them all out of the water. And Reed Pop may have just been like, look, we will. 
but we're going to have to rebuild the brand because it was gone for four years. And maybe that just wasn't allowed. Yeah, in E3's absence, many events took place in LA in June, including the Summer Games Fest, an Ubisoft Ford, and an Xbox Showcase, all of which were fun. Now, Keely has to miss suggestions that competition from his rival event was partly responsible for the cancellation. It probably was. And it's not his fault that he put on a better show and that E3 didn't get with the times and evolve and grow and sustain its interest. In a new interview with the Washington Post, Pierre Lewis suggested he was aware of the circumstances. We're going to end with this quote. There were fans who were invited to attend in the later years, but it really was about a marketing and business model for the industry and being able to provide the world with information about new products. Companies now have access to consumers and to business relations through a variety of means, including their own individual showcases. So the cow's opinion is that E3 was probably fated to die after it was mishandled during the pandemic. It could still be here. It could. Summer Games Fest, the PC gaming show, people tune in for those things. Uh, the Game Awards, people tune into that. They had the cast of Alan Wake dancing to the song. It was fun. Angry Joe didn't like it, but Angry Joe's good people. We're not going to make fun of just having his own taste. He's good people. We like Angry Joe. Not the least of which because he's a fellow Texan, but I digress. And I like being able to say the word digress in a video because it makes me sound smarter than I am. But the point I'm trying to make is this. E3 did not change. When it's it changed before the 2020s. You know, it used to be just a small industry event. Then it got bigger. Then they started inviting magazines and websites. And, and then they said, you know, we're going to open it to the fans. And I mean... You you can only have like ten to twenty thousand people that are not industry insiders coming in. E three probably should have gone back to being more about a marketing and an industry only event, and not the streamers. Not the f- freaking EA had like the collaborator cave or some stupid garbage where they put all the stream. Look, I like to put most streamers in a cave and then collapse the entrance on them too. But I, they just never knew how to how to deal with the fact that anybody with a camera and the microphone... I've got a channel now. And I'm not a big gaming company. You guys can hear my lovely voice telling you facts that are wrong. <laughs> Either he did not have the opportunity that it probably should have. But they knew back in 2020, we have to change because now you're getting more and more stuff. And then the pandemic hit and it just accelerated that timeline so fast that Nintendo with its directs and Xbox with its marketing and the publishers and the developers and us, the consumers, the people who buy the consoles and the PCs and the video games, we all moved on and E3 wanted to take multi-year breaks and you just can't do that. The world is not going to wait for you and we didn't wait for them. We watched the Game Awards I watch Nintendo Directs. I watch Super Robot Wars announcement videos with my friends on Discord now. We can't wait for you. And you know what? It's okay. Because things like Super Robot Wars and other really great niche games like Sea of Stars would probably be lost at E3. A once a year event that is dominated by the biggest AAA games and publishers. Yeah, you'll be able to find those diamonds in the rough, but... Now we have Steam and YouTube and Twitter and viral uh, videos and game demos that you can easily get. And we don't need E3. And that makes me a little sad because E3 used to be such a cool thing to look forward to every summer. It would literally be write down your checklist of the games you want to play over the next 12 months. Because if it's a great game, it's going to be at E3. I could make my I could make what game I wanted for Christmas off of E3 every year. But you can't anymore, it's gone. And again, the cow's opinion is that we just moved on, guys. We changed and the ESA could not change fast enough with us or did maybe they didn't want to. Maybe they thought that they were always going to be the biggest dog in the industry and that they don't need to change that everyone was waiting for E3 and we did. 
We we were upset when it was canceled in 2020. And then we want really wanted it and we loved it in 2021. And then 2022, they canceled it again. And then they canceled this year. And they keep canceled preemptively 2024 and 2025. And I think when they did that, I don't think it was their intention to never not do another E3. I think the ESA was honestly like, well, we'll figure it out. But we don't have any idea what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and just give us three years. But we all said, nope. We're done. I've got my Game Awards. I've got my Nintendo Directs. Even small video game companies can just put on their stuff. And E3 is gone. Guys, in the comments, did you ever watch an E3? Some of you may be a little too young. And that's okay. Tell me what you do or don't know about E3. Did you ever watch? Or you, How much are you going to miss it? Or are you kind of like me and... You know, they canceled it so many times that it's just, I already moved on and it doesn't matter. Let me know in the comments below. And even though E3 is gone, there's still games out there. And you know what that means. You can play more games! Because games are awesome. You deserve awesome. Pull one out for the daddy of all entertainment expos. And I'll see you next time.